Alrighty. Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It is the first day of fall, 2019. It's uh, September 21st. I want to welcome everybody to the call. This is our Power 18 call, and we have some very special guest speakers to introduce you to. Um, if you're new to Niken and you're learning about Niken for the first time, these stories, we hope, will compel you to recognize the value of the opportunity that's being presented to you, both immediately, the immediate term, and the long term. I'm getting a bit of a background noise somewhere. If you wouldn't mind muting, making certain everybody is muted out, uh, that'd be really helpful. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and introduce our speakers. We've got three speakers coming to you from different parts of North America um, and different parts of personal experiences. Our first presenter is Igor Grundle. He's a Nikan Royal Diamond. He's been with Nikan for 24 years. He's coming from Sarasota, Florida to you today. His background is business, fashion, and health. I'll let you tell, he'll tell you his story. So welcome, Igor. Are you there? Hello. Hi. Welcome. Well, uh, Igor, tell us a little bit about your background and um, your why. And uh, I guess I'll ask a question. I've got one question for each of you at the end. So keep your answers concise. I'm watching the clock. Cheers. Okay, excellent. Well, hello, everybody. And especially for those people that are new, welcome. This is a, uh, I, I think, you know, if, if, if this will affect you like it affected me 24 years ago, you're in for a treat. Um, I was, uh, I was, um, first of all, I was growing up in Germany, and I was a disgruntled Germany. So I immigrated to the United States, because I thought everything will be better in the United States. Um, and I wanted to get into the healthcare business. I was, as uh, Mike mentioned, in the fashion business. My parents had uh, 10 retail stores in women's fashion, and I figured out fairly quickly that I was not really good in picking out next year's fashion. Um, I, I did very well in, back, in the background, so I did all, you know, like I took care of logistics and all that, and later became actually a distribution manager for a designer company in in Munich, and uh, and I was deal I was a European uh, distribution manager for that company, which was a lot of fun. It still didn't satisfy my it satisfy me, but because we were in the fashion business, I thought I got to find something. So I ventured into uh, then uh, advertisement, and I worked with a, a, a rookie um, advertising agency in Germany. We become actually the the year that I started the rookie agency of that year. And we, it was very fairly simple. We just hired a, a bunch of uh, very expensive and uh, well-known photographers and writers. That was our claim to fame, but it worked pretty well. <laughs> and 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 I got a burnout uh, in the next three years, and my health wasn't doing so well. So I said, you know, I got to surround myself with things that I read that are dear to me, and that is health. Now originally I. I, I did study economics, but I didn't want to study that originally. I wanted to actually get into the natural healthcare field, become a naturopathic doctor. Well, anyway, when I immigrated to the United States, I said, this is my time. I can change everything now. And I thought, well, in the United States, they're very health conscious. So I'll just jump on the bandwagon. Well, I arrived here and found out, well, that really wasn't the case. But I still wanted to get into the healthcare field. And I said, well, what is the closest and the fastest way I can get into it? Well, it ended up being massage therapy. <laughs> so it only took about a, a year to get a license. And I said, okay, I'll do that. And uh, uh, of course, you know, I've, I started working in that field and uh, it kind of took care of me. I got uh, healthier again and, and fit. And then after a year of working in that field, I was like, well, this is not satisfying me. So I continued to move on. I became a... Uh, a physical therapist and, and, and a suspension table therapist, and I, I specialized in that. Well, during my time in the clinic where I was working, there was, of course, you know, a, there was a fax machine. And in that fax machine, there was a, um, a flyer that was printing out. And it says that uh, David Stolfus, PhD, uh, is coming to Nokomis, Florida, which was 10 minutes away from where I live. And I thought, well, I got to go there and see what this is all about. Now, the way I got into Nikon was also very funny. I did not want anything to do with sales because I came from sales and I thought I wasn't pretty, I wasn't very good at that. So anyway, I said, well, I'm not into sales, but I'm into health. And of course I was lured into a, a, um, 
into a meeting by somebody telling me there's somebody here from Hawaii and he's going to tell us how magnets work on living things. Well, I thought I'll go to that session and listen to that until I saw the flip chart, somebody in a suit and a whole bunch of products. Well, there were only four chairs. It was the front row and the back row. So I didn't have a chance to wiggle myself out of that. So I just sat through it. it took about three hours. And um, I made sure that they would not forget who I was because after they were done with the presentations, I said, well, they're just like telling people baloney and giving them hope I know exactly what happens with people and how we can help them. Well, needless to say, I did say, sign up. I asked my sponsor, please, to never call me. And I bought a bunch of products and took them home. Well, also needless to say, the products worked. And they worked on my wife, who didn't want them to work. Like, she really concentrated on making sure that they don't work. And they worked. So that piqued my curiosity even more because I said, now the placebo effect is out the window also. Then I put it on, the, on my patients after asking the doctors, would you mind if I use them on the patients? Well, I sent them home with the products on the weekend and they didn't show up on the, in the next week for their appointments, but bought the products. So I had another problem because now the doctors asked me to come into the office and say, told me, well, Mr. Grundle, you gotta stop using the products because the patients are getting better too quick. Now I, had a, now I had a dilemma because now I had to tell them, well, I find, finally found something in the natural healthcare field that I really feel really passionate about. And here, you know, it's like the bottom line is like stopping me from talking. I said, it's not going to happen. So I, I put the doctors to an ultimatum. I said, you can join me or I leave. Well, you can, rec you can probably figure out what happened. I left. <laughs> so... And, and my first half a year was, was a struggle, you know. It's like I, necess I don't necessarily recommend anybody to go full-time <laughs> when they figure out that it's really good. Uh, you you kind of want to ease yourself into it. But, you know, at that point, got, just being brand, brand new married and having our first son, um, that was probably a good time to go full-time. Not really, but it happened. That was my journey. Now, needless to say, my wife had a phenomenal experience. She had a horseback accident, and after about six weeks on the product, after figuring out she wasn't coming to therapy anymore because she had uh, the horseback accident, really um, damaged her pelvis and, and her um, ligaments. But every time she used the product, she became stable. And to this day, I mean, she wears the back flex, she sleeps in the sleep system, uses all the products. And when we travel and not take them with us, like if we go abroad and we can't take everything with us, we notice it. So it's always a reminder how good the products are actually working. Now, in the last 24 years, I've, of course, had, a, had thanks to Nika, and had a chance to reconnect with my family in Europe. Not only that, also to build one of the largest organizations in the German-speaking region, and also being able to travel all around the world, something that is really dear to my heart because I just love to immerse myself in new cultures and new experiences. And Nikan really made that happen. So, and, what, and, and in the end, it's always, well, what is it that you actually want out of life? And what can it be a vehicle to get you there? And one of the things that I really like about Nikan is, well, most people that, that I was kind of looking up to, they already did it. And so the, I recognize really quickly, you just have to ask those people that have already did it, what they did, and then just do the same thing. And it's like, like anything, like language or, or music, anything. If you repeat what somebody's done that's already doing good, well, you will end up there. And that's kind of, you know, even today, I mean, I'm still learning. There's still new things. And, and I, I love that. And when I look back at it, we just signed up a new first level distributor uh, just last week. And what is exciting is to, to see when somebody lights up. Like if you do it for 25 years and there's people, I never heard about this. It's like, what? Where were you? I've been talking about it for 24 years. <laughs> so it always surprises me. But then when they get the glow in their eyes, is this really possible? Is there really something out there? Is there really hope? That is, that is an excitement that fuels you over and over and over again. I and that jump, makes it I, easy. I got to jump in now. I have a question for you. So I, yeah. I need you to get this, to answer this question in the next minute. And that yeah. is really simple. Okay, so if you had your first 90 days to live over again in Nikan, you were starting brand new, 
as you're starting somebody new right now. The question is, what would you do the same or what, and, or what would you do differently if you had your first 90 days to live over again? Knowing that's what you very, know now. That's very simple. If I knew what I knew today, I would listen to the people that were successful before me and do exactly what they did. And I would, I would adhere to the rhythm of the business, understanding that there is a rhythm. There's a learning curve and then there's a rhythm. And to stay within that and, and to practice and to, and, and, and to not veer off. It took me a, a year and a half, and I, I would say I've made, I can't say I lost a year and a half. I mean, I, I went through some trial and errors, but I would go back and I would really work closely with somebody who is successful. And then, you know, just make sure I have a mentor, somebody that can, I can bounce things off when it gets tough so that I can build momentum and build trust. Fantastic. Wow. Great story. Thank you for your contribution this morning. And of course, all the years of being involved in Nikan, we, we appreciate it. And you're pleasure. looking fantastic. Well, so some you. of your health secrets on the next call, maybe, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, Igor, for joining Cheers. us. We're staying in Florida, uh, actually no, uh, originally from Florida, but now she's right now in Colorado. So it's uh, Royal Diamond, uh, Barbara Bertucci. She's been with Nikan also 24 years, background in medical building, billing, uh, being a mom. I think that's an important area to, to really, uh, to, to emphasize because we know we got a lot of people out there that are transitioning from um, working, in the, working in employment, traditional employment, having children, young families, and now looking to get away from that and be maybe in a, a business that they can work from home or work from anywhere that's non-traditional that gives them the sense of freedom that I know you've discovered since you've been in Nikan. So Barbara, why don't you tell us your story? Yes, thanks, Michael, for having us on, having me on. And uh, yeah, I'm flying back today to Florida. I live in Florida. <clears throat> and when I started Nikan, well, when I moved to Florida, it was interesting. I didn't want to get um, I had worked my way up to being a, um, actually a restaurant manager and then also an office manager in medical field. And I didn't want to be opening and closing anything. When you have two small children, you want your freedom, you want your time freedom. And that was really, really important to me. So that's when I started my own medical billing business. So I could kind of come and go walk in offices, go in the back door, get their information, leave and then make it to pick them up from school, go to soccer field, you know, whatever I needed to do or the theater. We, we were very active family, like a lot of people are when they have young children. And that's when I started knee cannon. Um, but for me, I actually, in my thirties, um, I suffered with the bad back for four and a half years after the birth of my second child. And so I was, luckily I had the baby. So I was there and they're telling me we're going to fuse it, put a rod in it, remove it. And I'm like, you know, I'm walking around now. My dad was a family physician and I saw people get a little butchered up and hurt worse in other areas than before. And I'm, I'm going to be fine. I'll figure it out. And so, uh, Nikan came along and again, someone from Hawaii flew to Florida, thank goodness, to share these products. And I just, uh, within three days of being on the sleep system and uh, back, having some daytime products on me, I just got up, I started heading to the bathroom and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm up straight. I used to be like old Uncle Joe, you know, kind of push myself out of bed, force myself up and then you know, make it to the shower, as hot a shower as I could take it so I could then stand upright. And I, I kind of say that because I guess like Carol, I won't be healed, but I don't hurt. And I have more energy, more vitality now. I just turned 60. <laughs> I used to say in my 50s, now I gotta say 60s. But anyway, uh, then I did in my uh, 30s. And that is giving me back my life. And that's what Nikan has. It's an amazing gift uh, to have. And I just started sharing it in all the offices. I was like, let's go figure out what we have to do because I can sell a lot of these things. And that was the back magnet, the insoles, you know, and, and just sharing at that point, those, uh, those products is how I started. And so it is, it's amazing. And getting your life back, giving that gift to people uh, is tremendous, Michael. And I, I feel it's kind of like a personal obligation. You know, it's like I got this 
gym of a thing. And, you know, I, I still, I don't know if I'm working or playing, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that's loud and clear is the passion that you have. And, and, you know, 24 years of involvement in something and having the passion that you have for it is just startling when you contrast that pretty much any, any vocation or occupation people have out there. So I think it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. And you look fantastic, so I wouldn't be <laughs> wouldn't be worried about your age. It's just a number. You're looking great. And thanks to Nika, <laughs> of course. So my question yeah, to you, same you. question I had for Igor, and that is, okay, in hindsight, looking back, 2020 mm -hmm. vision, if you had your first 90 days to live over again, knowing now what you know about getting started in the business and what you could have done better, what would have that been? Or maybe there was things that you did that you would just stick to. So would you give us some insights on that? I, I, you know, one of the most brilliant things we did, which we didn't realize was brilliant, but I, uh, we went up to Hilton Head to where a bunch of the leaders had gotten together and we said, we have the hotel room, y'all just come on and we just, you know, had people come in there and to get around leaders that were already successful to see them and to see, I sat next to Dave Johnson at a table and they said, well, it was casual. It was Florida. And he's in a goofy t-shirt, you know, from, 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 from Disneyland. And I'm like, and everybody's decked out, dressed up. And I'm like, who is this man? Right. You know, it's like, come sit at our table. Let's see what, you know, and, and just to have that personableness, that connection uh, with them and to see the vision and to have people like, um, I, I shared this earlier uh, when I was out in Concord, and it was, if, if I could dream this far, then getting, that's all I could see for me, Michael, was that I could get, you know, replace my income. You know, at that point, that's all I could see. But then once I got around the other leaders, I could see a little further, and I could dream a little bigger, and I could you know, well, God, if I really worked at this, if I really made a plan, if I really listened to what they're doing, I could actually do this, you know? And it was like, like the light bulbs went off and it was like, oh my gosh, you know? And, and I think that's like really, um, that we all have the potentiality of it. We just don't know it. And so it's that little gap that, that these big events that you know we have around the country that are so tremendous that gives people that glimpse of an opportunity to say hey if you want this you know you could actually get this and that is tremendous um you know getting people to the events is really um a big big deal and i would have gotten more people to that one in south carolina um but i also jokingly say you know i'm the leader which way they go you know, Igor, we were like hand in hand working together. I, I really don't know. You know, we just kept making messes and cleaning up. And <laughs> Fantastic. Well, so, okay. So your advice is get to an event, get it as soon as possible, bring people to it. And I'm glad you brought that up because actually we're less than two weeks away from the next big event in, in uh, Niken. And that is being hosted by myself and Botanis right here in Toronto. So please write this down. www hbminvitational.net. Check out the website, hbminvitational.net. We have the who's who in Niken coming to this event. We have the CEO and chairman of the board. We have the president of Niken Global. We have the director of uh, training for North America and for uh, the director of training for uh, Europe. Uh, we have the chancellor of Niken University. We have the top five income earners. Uh, it's probably a good event to come to if you're looking to do something significant as everybody's been sh sharing. So uh, make a point of checking it out at the very least. And if for whatever reason you don't think you can actually be here, that doesn't mean you can't send people. We have a special segment happening on October 5th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. with all kinds of goodies involved. For any guests that you send our way, you can register your, your guests free also at that website, hbminvitational.net. All right. Thank you, Barbara, for sharing your story with us and, uh, and your morning or afternoon. We're going to now move to California. Uh, Irvine is the home office uh, area for Nikan Corporate internationally. And now living, recently now living in Irvine, California, is my sponsor and Royal Diamond, Ben Woodward. 
Now, Ben, I know you're the new kid on the block, uh, eight years with Nikin, but your background is so diverse. Uh, everything from uh, the corporate side of direct sales and network marketing to now the field side, and even in the uh, in the field of um, the uh, associations associated with the industry, uh, your your footprint is all over the place. Uh, so we're very pleased to have you on this call. We're thrilled to have you as a member of the Nikan family, and I'm personally grateful for having you as a partner and sponsor. So, Ben Woodward, share us your story, please. Yeah, cool. Thank you. So, <clears throat> I've been around network marketing for years. I am the baby of the group here. At, you know, eight years old. Uh, in, in the business, but um, I went to my first business opportunity presentation uh, when I was 18 years old. Uh, my sister was what I call a network marketing junkie. Um, she's been involved in all sorts of different MLMs uh, over the years, and so I got exposed to it very early. So I grew up in a home that had Amway products and Nature's Sunshine and New Skin and all these other companies. Uh, as my sister kind of tried and tested all of them to to find her way um, uh, in this entrepreneurial environment. Uh, when I moved to the UK, I got involved in an MLM as a distributor. I was 22 at the time and uh, had the chance to dip my toe in there, had a great experience. Um, but I also got my first job um, in the corporate side um, in a network marketing company in the UK. So I started out originally working for a direct selling company uh, in, their, in their media department. Uh, my career began as a graphic designer. Uh, I then became their marketing manager. Uh, this was for a European region um, and had a great experience there. So I then um, moved into training and was very fortunate in my late 20s uh, to become the general manager of Amway, which is the biggest um, MLM in our industry. So I was actually their youngest uh, general manager of the 26 markets that they had uh, across Europe. And uh, that, that was an interesting experience. And I raised that one specifically um, because I, I moved into that company commercially because I really wanted to make a difference. And I thought this was a chance where I could do that. And one of the challenges that I experienced when I was general manager there was the government came along and tried to shut them down. They didn't like the way they were working. And uh, so all of a sudden I'm in my 20s and I'm thrown into one of the biggest um, market crises that the largest MLM has ever come across uh, in its history. Uh, it's a second oldest market and here it is being a um, uh, second oldest international market and here it is being threatened to, uh, with closure. So what that did for me though was it took the rose colored glasses off and gave me a chance to see things as they really are. You know, when you're young and new, it's very easy when you've got a boss who's been there for 15 years, who runs a region that's like $300 million in turnover, um, and everyone knows him, loves him, thinks he's awesome. And he was a great guy, don't get me wrong. But you kind of take what he says as, well, this is the way it is. So you'd see all these things that weren't necessarily right, but, well, this is the way it is, and this is what everyone accepts as part of the business, and that's the way it is this crisis kind of removed that filter and said it doesn't have to be that way. So when I left that business and moved to, to a, another company, my goal wasn't just about making a difference uh, and, and trying to have reach um, like a big organization like that had. It was do it right, do it well. Um, and so I started to look for places that had their focus on the right things and were doing business in the right way. And that's what eventually led me to, to NECAM. And, um, and as Mike mentioned, I was on the board of directors for the UK Direct Selling Association and on the CEO council for the European Association. Um, and that gave me exposure to how other companies are operating, working as well. What I loved about NECAM, what attracted me and what has reinforced my interest ever since, especially with, and I want to highlight that, that this is why I share that preamble, that the contrast of that deep personal exposure uh, to other businesses. What I loved about Niken was its cause of humans being more and the five pillars of health. A healthy mind, healthy body, healthy family, healthy society, healthy finances. And, and having a, a product portfolio that genuinely reflected that, the wellness home. A chance to really bring the place that for me as a father of seven kids, the most important place on the planet for me, is my home. I remember as a kid, 
uh, hearing someone that traveled internationally all the time. He was just, every country, you know, just constantly on the road. Someone said to him once in an interview, of all the places that you've traveled, what's your favorite place? And he said, home. And, I, and, and at first, as a teenager, I didn't get that. I thought, how can home be your favorite place when you can go to all these exotic locations? Um, as an adult now, as a husband and father, of all the places that I've been, the place that's most important and that I treasure the most is home. So the fact that Nikan has a wellness home, that it teaches people how to get balance, um, and it gives us a, a, an environment where we can drive that message forward with legitimacy and authenticity, that is something that I really love and cherish. That's why I got in. Um, it's, I'm eight years young, um, but, uh, but I, I'm here for many, many years to come uh, as a consequence of that cause and that vision and the people, of course, um, that you get to associate with. You guys are all becoming my closest friends, and I, and I love that. So uh, that's what it's about. Ben, thank you for that. Thank you for your story. You know, we've got um, a lot of new people as well joining the team right now. And there's probably some new people on this call right now who would like to be informed as to what advice you would give them in terms of getting the best start possible. And I know I've asked different questions of the others, but just right now, today, this month, especially, we've got some things going on right now in the Nikan world that are different than they have been in the past. There's so many reasons to get started today, but in a very particular way. Would you mind maybe just touching on what your recommendation is for somebody or somebody you've just sponsored as to how to give them the best start possible? I, I think fundamentally, there's a couple of things that spring to mind that I think are really critical. The first is you've got to get in your own mind a very clear view and vision of what you really want to get out of it. Um, if, if you don't have that clear vision of what you want to achieve, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll hit stumbling blocks, roadblocks, which are in every business and every facet of every part of our lives. But if you don't have that vision of what can lie ahead, it'll blow you out of the business. So it's really, really important that you, first and foremost, you anchor yourself to your own vision and cause and spend some time crafting that. Again, Bob, is, or as she's already mentioned this, but we've got these events that are coming up that are so important because they give us the chance to connect more deeply and more emotionally to that vision. You know, sometimes the, the challenge is it's, it's easy to say, get a bigger vision, yeah? Um, but you can't just do that. That's not just a cognitive process, like I'm gonna pick a new book to read or a new course to study. That's something that comes from within. The way that we do that is to surround ourselves by other people that have a big vision and let that by osmosis or transfusion <laughs> kind of connect with us and influence and rub off on us and uh, soak in that same kind of environment. So, so that big event in Toronto that's already been discussed, really, really important for that purpose. Uh, so I, I would emphasize that. The other thing that, um, and I learned this in my own experience, is we're very busy and time has a different currency today than it has ever had. People are significantly more impatient uh, they are more demanding. They have greater expectations on what their time will give them. Um, and as a result of that, we're also getting pulled from pillar to post all the time. And you now what that means is in this business, there, you, you don't get paid on everything you do. You get paid on critical things that you do well. Yeah. And so what we need to do is learn how to prioritize our time and do the things that matter most and not, as my wife often says, don't get caught up in the thick of thin things. Yeah. It's so easy to get caught up in the thick of thin things. And when we're being self-governed as we are in our Nikkei business, it's very easy to put our attention on stuff that doesn't matter because it's easier to get done versus do the difficult stuff. That's actually the most important. Yeah. So learn to prioritize, do the stuff that hurts. If it's the most important, doesn't matter if it hurts, get it done and do it quickly so you don't have to stress about it later. But do the, do the tough stuff, get it done, and prioritize that, and then you'll have so much more time to do the things that you enjoy doing. Fantastic, great advice. I was, I was just wondering when you were saying get the stuff, tough stuff done as a new person, what do you think is the toughest thing for a new person? It's getting out of your comfort zone and talking to people. Yeah. It's, 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 it always starts with the first things, which is, you know, 
building your contact list, that's the easy bit because you're not talking to people there, but getting people from your contact list onto your phone and speaking and having the conversations, have the conversations. That's the tough stuff, I think, have the conversations. And even now, I think I've spoken to plenty of people that have been in the business for years. They still get nervous from time to time, picking up the phone, doing a presentation, um, and that's okay. That, that, that's not a suggestion of, this is gonna to be tough for the rest of my life. It means you care, yeah? Beyonce once famously was asked, you know, do you, do you still get nervous? You're this absolute diva, kind of rock star, pop star. Do you still get nervous when you perform? And she said, absolutely. But if I didn't, it'd be because I didn't care about my audience, yeah? So e even people that are near you know, billion dollar status like she is, still get nervous because they, they love the people that they're serving. Yeah. And that's, that, that's, the, that's the thing. Cool. So talk to people. Awesome. 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 Well, thank you, Ben. Uh, thank you, Igor. Thank you, Barbara. And thank you all the listeners, uh, both who are here live and those of you who are watching the playback. Uh, we, uh, we love what we do. We hope you've seen something here that inspires you to make a decision to join us and to really get busy helping us help other people learn about the wonders of Niken and a life in balance. So thanks, everyone. Have a great, great fall. And we'll see you in Toronto, hopefully, at the next event. Cheers.